We are going to continue with theorem two. Now, assuming I have a circle. Okay. Assuming I have a circle with center O. And I have this as a diameter. Now, remember, I said a diameter is also a chord. Now, if from the center to the circumference is a radius, so we have radius here. We also have another radius here. So we have radii in this case. So now, if this radius and this radius, which is a chord, these two are sustaining an angle to the center of a circle. And we know the angle for the center of a circle. We know the radius, the diameter, is dividing the circle into two equal parts. So the angle at the center over here is 180 degrees because it is dividing the circle into two equal parts. Now, if this is radius and this is another radius, and they are both sustaining an angle to the center here, okay? And this same chord is also sustaining another angle to the circumference. Now, in the first theory, we learned that the angle sustained by a chord. Now, this is a chord. These two radii are making a chord. The center is twice the angle it sustains to the circumference. So, always the angle over here at the center is bigger than that at the circumference. So, if this is 180, if this is 180 degrees, it means the angle at the circumference is what? 90 degrees, which is half of 180. So, half times 180 will give us 90 degrees. This theorem says that the angle subtended by a diameter, the angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference, to the circumference of a circle is 90 degrees. So this is our second theorem, which is very, very short and it's very simple. It says that the angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference of a circle is 90. And I explained that if we have a radius and another radius, we're making a radii, sustaining an angle to the center, so which is a chord, sustaining an angle to the center, and that angle is 180 because half of a diameter is what? Half of a circle is 180. And it sustains an angle to the circumference. This is half of 180, which is what? 90. So the angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference of a circle is 90 degrees. Now, let's take an example. We have a circle PQR with center O. And we could see from the circle that POQ is a diameter because we have the center O here and this is PQ. And PQ is a straight line. So it means that POQ is a diameter. And we could see that the line PQ or the curve PQ sustains an angle to the circumference. And we are asked to find the value of X. Now from this, we could straight away tell that the angle PRQ, angle PRQ, which is angle PRQ, which is this angle, is equal to 90 degrees. Our reason being that the angle subtended by a chord, by a diameter, sorry, by a diameter to the circumference, to the circumference. of a circle is 90 degrees. So we have the angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference of a circle is 90 degrees. So it means that we have angle P R Q to be equal to 90 degrees. Now we are solving for X. Now, to solve for x, knowing that this is 90 and this is 40 and this is x. Now, PQR is a triangle. Okay? 
BQR is a triangle, more like a right angle triangle. So we are going to use the sum of interior angles of a triangle to solve for the value of what? X. So we can say that X plus 90 degrees plus 40 degrees is equal to what? 180. So we can use this to find our value of what? X. And solving for X, we shall have X to be equal to 180 minus 90 minus 40, which will be equal to X is equal to what? 50 degrees. So in this question, our value of X is equal to 50 degrees. Now let's move to theorem 3.